Welcome to basic power system analysis using PSSE. In this lecture, we are going to lay the preparatory work for molding this 200 megawatt sample system into PSSE. So if you look at this system, this system consists of seven buses, out of which two buses are generator buses and three buses are load buses. Whereas we have two buses which are uh, which are only going to perform the function of interconnection between the two systems. So if you look at the data here, we can see the generator data. For the generator data, as we studied that for power system analysis or the load flow analysis, simple load flow analysis, we require P gen, the megawatt output of the generator and the reactive limits. So both these values are given. We are not interested in system reactances, generator reactances right now or the MVA capacity because for the load flow analysis the only required is the Q min and Q max limit and P gen. Similarly on the load side if you see we have load in the form of megawatt and power factor. From the, this power factor and P value we are going to calculate Q value. For the transformers if you see the transformer reactances are given on its own MVA base, the transformer, uh, transformer MVA base. But in PSSC, we have to convert them into system base. The system base we will be uh, considering as 100 MVA. So we will convert this 10% into 100 uh, based on 100 MVA base using the formulas we already saw. For the transmission line, the data for R, X and B, B is the line charging. It is given in the form of ohms per kilometer. But in PSSC, this data is required in the form of per unit. So the first thing we are going to do is convert these per unit values and convert these ohmic values into per unit values per kilometer and then multiply per kilometer value with the length of the circuit in order to get the total resistance, reactance and impedance of the transmission lines. So before we move on to the preparatory work, there is one more thing we need to understand. Here the buses in PSSC or for the load flow analysis can be of three types. The buses can be generator buses or the PV buses or they can be load buses or the PQ buses or the slack bus which is also known as delta V bus. Here in this, uh, in PSSC, when we perform load flow analysis, we have to uh, use at least one generator bus as the slack bus. Why? Because this is due to the algorithm used by PSSC for performing load flow analysis. The newton raphson method or the gauss seidel method are basically iterative methods for performing load flow solution. So for this solution, we need to consider one bus as the reference bus. So that reference bus is known as the slack bus. At the slack bus, the two quantities we need to give are the delta value and the V value. So when we are performing the analysis for the first time, the delta will be considered as zero degree because this is the reference bus and the voltage will be considered as one per unit. And then load flow analysis, uh, this Newton option will solve this load flow analysis and calculate the values for each bus based on the iterative technique. So in other words, we can say that when we are performing load flow analysis, we are interested in four quantities. The P value, which is the active power, the Q value, which is the reactive power, the delta value, which is the angle, and the last value is voltage magnitude. If you see here, this is the distribution for each bus, we know two quantities and the rest of the uh, remaining two quantities can be calculated by the algorithm itself. So for the generator bus, we have real power, which is the P gen. We know this value. Voltage magnitude, we know it indirectly because we know the values of Q max and Q main. So what is PSSC going to do? PSSC is going to calculate the voltage at that bus based on this reactive power limit. Similarly, for the load bus, we have P value and the Q value. For the slack bus, we, we already know delta and voltage magnitude. And once these quantities are known, it is easier for us to find the remaining quantities. 